Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight. I'm Tracy Shilchi, getting in the day's top stories, starting with the headlines. Massive rally in Uttar Pradesh's Saharanpur highlights the beginning of celebrations of two years of Narendra Modi's government. Opposition, though, slams the NDA, says they're fooling people. President Pranab Mukherjee underlined strategic importance of India-China relations during his meeting with Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping, says leaders in both countries can work for a positive global impact. Supreme Court relaxes the bail condition for Italian Marine accused of killing Kerala fishermen allowed to return home to Italy. Kerala Chief Minister calls it big foul play by the centre. Donald Trump reaches the number of delegates needed to clinch the Republican nomination for president. Party's national convention will be held in Cleveland in July. And the G7 summit begins in Japan with leaders voicing concerns about emerging economies, counter-extremism action plan likely by the end of the two-day summit. But our top story this evening and what will be in the coming fortnight today marks the second anniversary of the BGP-led NDA government. The celebrations were marked by Prime Minister Modi's mega rally in Saharanpur and a series of other events across different districts in Uttar Pradesh. Celebrations aside, the strategy of the party is of course to concentrate its energy on UP, which goes to polls next year. Winning it is crucial for the BJP to strengthen its hold in Rajya Sabha. Full page ads in newspapers promising to transform India and a message from the Prime Minister that the country is indeed changing. That's how the second anniversary celebrations of the Narendra Modi government began on Thursday. A mega rally to highlight the government's achievements in two years was held at Saharanpur in UP, addressed by the Prime Minister himself, wherein he announced increasing the retirement age of government doctors to 65. मैं आज उत्तर प्रदेश की धरती से देशवासियों के लिए घोषणा करना चाहता हूं कि आज डॉक्टरों की जो सरकारी अस्पतालों में है उनकी रिटायरमेंट की उम्र कहीं 60 साल है कहीं 62 साल है इसी सप्ताह हमारी सरकार की कैबिनेट निर्णय करेगी और उसके बाद अब डॉक्टरों की रिटायर्ड होने की एज 60 62 के बजाय राज्य हो या भारत सरकार हो सबके लिए 65 उम्र कर दी जाएगी 60 A number of cabinet ministers also addressed rallies and participated in various programs across different parts of UP The party is now specifically targeting UP with an eye on the state polls next year a number of programs have also been planned from the 27th of May to June 15, covering as many as 33 cities across the country. Ministers have been directed to go and inform people about the achievements and schemes of the government. A mega show to celebrate two years of the NDA government is also being organized at India Gate on Saturday. Opposition parties, however, are amused neither by the government's plans nor by the Prime Minister's new announcements. The government is just thriving on advertisements. This two years of NDA era was of social tension and fear. All the sections of society, be youth, farmers, industrious traders, women, OBC, SC, STR minorities, are either disenchanted with the government or are living in a fear psychosis. Economy total complete failure the this government has totally failed to revive the economy many congress governments already have a retirement age of 62 years for doctors that is not enough we need to produce more doctors in india pmo ke officer travel agent ban gaye mani modi ji ko is desh mein bheja ja raha hai us desh mein bheja ja raha hai kis ummeed ke sath bheja ja raha hai ki videshon ke sath mani modi ji ke bharat varsh ke sambandh sudharenge अरे जो शांत बैठा रहता था नेपाल वो भी आपको आंख दिखाता है चाइना की तो छोड़ दीजिए वो आपके घर में हर दूसरे तीसरे दिन घुसा आता है 
Despite the criticism, Prime Minister Modi believes that his government has brought in the much required changes in the country, a message he wants to spread through this video, released on his second year in office, detailing every flagship scheme and policy of his government. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. We'll keep an eye on more celebrations as they continue through the fortnight. Meanwhile, India has sought China's cooperation in international fora like the UN in the fight against terrorism, making it clear that there was no good or bad terrorists. President Pranam Mukherjee told the Chinese leadership that Beijing should play a positive role in ensuring a predictable nuclear regime as New Delhi seeks to join the elite nuclear suppliers group. Pranam Mukherjee is on a 40 visit to China where he, today he met uh, his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping and Premier Li Qiang. Uh, essentially, on terrorism, uh, what was conveyed by the president was that, you know, uh, this was this was really a global uh, fight uh, uh, that all countries, both India and China, were uh, affected by terrorism, uh, and that uh, there was a very strong sentiment in India on this issue because we had lost uh, a great many lives uh, to to terrorism, uh, and that uh, elimination of international and transborder terrorism did require inter, you know, uh, more cooperation and collaboration uh, and that there was no such thing as good terrorists and bad terrorists. Uh, this was a point which the uh, President said with uh, considerable emphasis uh, and that you know, terrorists do not have an ideology that their commitment is only for uh, sort of wanton destruction uh, and that uh, we, uh, we must have an understanding and you know, we, we sort of uh, both, both bilaterally and multilaterally and fighting uh, terrorism. Uh, broadly, uh, there was an acceptance of that uh, position and uh, the conclusion of that conversation was that uh, we would strive for closer cooperation in the United Nations on this issue. President Pranam Mukherjee told his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping that Sino-India relations have acquired strategic significance. During his opening remarks during talks with Xi at the Great Hall of the People, Mukherjee said that if the two countries work together, they can generate tremendous momentum for global peace and prosperity. The talks began after Mukherjee was given a ceremonial welcome with a 21-gun salute. Mukherjee also met Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, Lee conveyed that both the countries actually provide development opportunities for each other. Earlier, President Mukherjee delivered a lecture at the elite Peking University in Beijing. He outlined the eight pillars for future of India-China relations. He said that political understanding between the two countries is vital for closer developmental partnership. India and China are the inheritors of a great legacy, born of our intensive intellectual and cultural contacts since the first millennium. President Mukherjee stressed on the need for enhancing people-to-people -people contact while also resolving issues facing the two countries through political acumen. Our bilateral relations have been tested by difficulties and challenges, but the determination of the people to safeguard their friendship with the people of China and India has visibly endured. In the backdrop of China blocking India's bid in the United Nations Security Council, Mukherjee recalled India's support to China's membership of the UN. It was demonstrated in India's early recognition of the People's Republic of China in December 1949, the establishment of our diplomatic relations in April 1950, and India's constant public support through the 80s, 60s, and 70s for the admission of the People's Republic of China to the United Nations and the restitution of the permanent membership of United Nations Security Council. The President also highlighted that both India and China are poised to play a significant and constructive role in the 21st century. We both are at the threshold of an opportunity to join hands and create a resurgence, a positive energy on Asian century. President Mukherjee is on the third day of his four-day visit to China. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV.
Meanwhile, Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari will undertake a five-day visit to the North African countries of Morocco and Tunisia from the 30th of May. The Vice President will be in Morocco from the 30th to the 30th of May to 1st of June at the invitation of Prime Minister Abdelillah Benkirani. The two leaders would uh, jointly launch the India-Morocco Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Rabat. Vice President Ansari would also hold discussions in Rabat with King Mohammed VI and the Prime Minister. On the second leg of his two-nation tour, Ansari will be visiting Tunisia from the 2nd of June to the 3rd of June at the invitation of the Prime Minister Habib Esed. During his visit, the Vice President will be holding discussions in Tunis with Esed and President Beji Kaid Esebsi. He would then deliver a keynote address to the Tunisian diplomatic corps, leading scholars and think tanks at the Tunisian Institute for Strategic Studies. The Vice President will be accompanied by the Minister of State for Chemicals and Fertilizers, Hansraj Gangaram Ahir, four members of parliament and senior officials. On to more national news and the Italian Marine accused for killing two Indian fishermen in 2012 is free to go back to his country. This after the Supreme Court relaxed his bail on four conditions. The Kerala government has reacted sharply to the development, calling it a big foul play by the centre, while Italy has said that it will comply with the bail conditions. Here are more details. The Supreme Court has relaxed the bail conditions of Salvatore Giron, one of the two Italian Marines accused of killing two Indian fishermen off the Kerala coast in 2012. The apex court has allowed him to go back to Italy till an international arbitral tribunal decides the jurisdictional issue between the two countries. The centre had also backed the Marine's plea, saying he should be granted relief on humanitarian grounds. However, the bench sought an undertaking from the Italian ambassador that Giron would return within a month if the international tribunal rules the case in India's favour. The apex court has imposed four conditions on the marine during his stay in Italy. The court has said in its order that because of this order of the international tribunal, uh, India has to comply with the order. So therefore, as per the order, now certain conditions have been put which will be, uh, which are the conditions which will be used to uh, permit him to go abroad and stay in Italy. Under the bail conditions, Giron must report to a police station in Italy every month. Giron must not influence or tamper with the evidence. The third condition imposed by the Supreme Court is that Giron must give an undertaking that he will remain under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And lastly, the Supreme Court would cancel his bail if he is found violating any of the imposed conditions. Decision is against the fisherman's right. Actually, government of India, Indian authorities allowed to uh, the Italian marines to go back to Italy. Prime Minister's stand is against the fisherman's rights. While Salvatore Giron has been living in the Italian embassy in New Delhi, the other marine, Miss Emiliano Latore, went back to Italy after he suffered a stroke in 2014. The Marines who were on board ship Enrica Lexi are accused of killing two Indian fishermen during an anti-piracy mission. Their arrest has strained ties between the two countries, with Italy demanding the sailors be released. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now to news from Bihar. Lok Jan Shakti Party leader Sudesh Paswan was shot dead on Wednesday evening in the Naxal-affected Dumaria block of Gaya district. Paswan was the block president of Union Minister Ramilas Paswan's LGP party and was canvassing for his wife Maya Kumari in the ongoing panchayat election when he was gunned down by unidentified motorcycle-born criminals at Duat village. His cousin, who was also injured in the shootout, succumbed to injuries at the hospital. The killing is said to have been executed by Maoists and has spread panic in the area. Meanwhile, former Bihar Chief Minister Jitin Ram Manji also and his entourage were attacked at the same area, in fact, in Dumaria on Thursday morning when he went to meet Sudesh Paswan's family. Maji was, however, escaped unhurt, but the mob torched an escort vehicle and police fired to disperse an angry crowd. इस तरीके से कड़ी-कड़ी सात-आठ हमारे पार्टी के इम्पोर्टेंट पदाधिकारी मारे जा चुके हैं। बजनाथी सिंह की हत्या जो है दिन और सब दिन धारे हो रही है और कहीं कोई पकड़ाया नहीं जा रहा है। सिर्फ एक दिखावा हो रहा है और उधर हत्या होती है और हत्या के पहले कहते हैं कि जंगल राज नहीं मंगल राज आ गया है यही मंगल राज है हम लोग आंदोलन करेंगे अभी चिराग गए हैं वहां जाकर के अभी उनके परिवार के लोगों से मिलेंगे बहुत दुखद घटना है हम उनके परिवार के प्रति शोक व्यक्त करते हैं यह भी लगता है कि यह ऐसा मामला है जिसमें कहीं न कहीं भारतीय जनता पार्टी राजनीति करना चाहती है यह अगर सही में राज्य में इतनी गंभीर समस्या है लॉ एंड ऑर्डर की तो हम सबको उसका समाधान ढूंढने का प्रयास करना चाहिए 
और सरकार की कार्यकुशलता पर और नीतीश कुमार जी के व्यक्तिगत कार्यकुशलता पर हमें भरोसा है कि जो भी इन घटनाओं का अंजाम दे रहे सरकार उन्हें पकड़ेगी और पकड़ भी रही है कोई अपराधी जो गड़बड़ करता कानून तोड़ता उसको कानून के हवाले किया जाता उसको जेल दिया जाता है वहाँ कोई मरोवत नहीं यह दुष्प्रचार है The Congress has demanded an apology from the Prime Minister over BJP MP Subramanian Swami's remarks against RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan. The party has accused Swami of targeting one of the most outstanding economists of the world. The party has said that it is unfortunate that the government failed to clarify that it was not its view when Subramanian Swami made the demand for Rajan's removal for the first time. The Gujarat government has rolled back 5% value added tax imposed on industrial salt in the 2016-17 budget. The move comes after opposition from salt manufacturers for the imposition of VAT in a cabinet meeting. Salt producers had earlier threatened strike demanding complete rollback on VAT as it is full of technical complexities which expose them to harassment from VAT inspectors. Separatist groups including the Hurriyat Conference and JKLF call for a shutdown against killings of three youths who the Hizbul Mujahideen claim were its cadre. Shops, business establishments and offices were closed while public transport was off the roads. The bullet-riddled bodies of the three youths were recovered in Baramulla triggering a clash between protesters and law enforcement agencies. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal met a 13-year-old girl who was raped and is now being treated at the AIMS hospital. After the meeting, he raised the demand for complete statehood for Delhi to curb such incidents since law and order does not fall under the Delhi government. The victim was found near the railway tracks in Delhi where she was dumped after being sexually assaulted. With our a quick break here, we'll be back with the top international stories in a bit. Stay with us. Unless you propagate basic research in India, this country would not catch up with the rest of the world. If you want to come back, then come back as an Indian. If you want to be a foreigner in India, you will never succeed. If we have to import a technology from America, please import it 100%. But work on developing your own technology. What you recall with Professor Khurshid Iqbal Andrabi, Vice Chancellor, Kashmir University, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. Let's give you now our continuing focus on the drought crisis across the country. Once known as the textile city of India, Bhilwara in Rajasthan is now facing severe water crisis. Four lakh people in the district are dependent on a train which brings about 50 lakh liters of water every day. The administration has imposed a water emergency in the district. Arvind Kumar Singh reports. A hundred and twenty hours without water and this is what residents in Bilwara are forced to do. This old lady has been forced to risk getting inside a water tank to fetch water. There are water tanks in front of almost every home here but most of them have been locked. This is a city that two decades ago had no difficulty getting water even for those living on the fifth floor. Now the condition is such that at several places water arrives once in five days for a few minutes. The water requirement in Bilwara is 520 lakh litres per day. But with the major dam drying up, people are being forced to make other arrangements. Water is being brought through pipeline from Kankrolia and through tankers as well. The railways is already providing 25 lakh litres of water. From May 19, two trains have been bringing 50 lakh litres of water morning and evening. But all these steps are insufficient to meet the needs of the people here. The administration has already announced a water emergency here. Swimming pools and fountains have been shut, but officials say 
that the situation is dire. यहाँ बिलोड़ा का मुख्य जल स्रोत मेजा डैम था जो नवंबर महीने में ही सूख गया एक यहाँ से 45 किलोमीटर दूर ककरौले घाटी के अंदर अंडरग्राउंड है उससे हम लोग 125 से 30 लाख लीटर ले पा रहे हैं मेजा में जो कि सिर्फ 40 लाख लीटर ही आ पा रहा है इस हिसाब से क्राइसिस है द अर्बन पॉपुलेशन इन भिलवाड़ा इज अबाउट फोर लैख Despite spending close to 10 crore rupees on transporting water through trains, people are able to get water only once in 5 to 6 days. Several families have left Bhilwara due to the acute water shortage. Pani itna mehanga aur itna aa raha hai to hamare jitne bhi swimming pool hai humne band karwaye hain, fawaare humne band karwaye hain, gaadiyan jo hum pipe se dhote hain us par humne ban lagaya hai. और अगर किसी प्रकार कोई जल का दुरुपयोग अगर पाया जाता है तो हम उसका कनेक्शन बंद करने की बात कर रहे हैं द रेजिडेंट ऑफ वस्त्र नगरी इन भिलवाड़ा आर फेसिंग द मोस्ट अक्यूट वाटर शॉर्टेज इन दंटायर स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान एज अ रिजल्ट मेजोरिटी ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट नाउ कैटेगराइज एज अ डॉग जोन दिस हैपन्स विद एटी परसेंट और मोर ग्राउंड वाटर बींग एग्जॉस्टेड अरविंद कुमार सिंह रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी A massive explosion occurred inside a chemical factory in the outskirts of Mumbai today. At least three people are feared dead and over 100 injured in the incident. Reportedly, officials have sealed the areas of the factory to ensure that rescue work is carried out unhindered. At least three people have been killed and several others injured in a blast inside a chemical factory in Dombivali area near Mumbai. The mishap reportedly occurred after the blast in a boiler in Acharya chemical factory in Dombivali. The impact of the blast was reportedly so severe that it was felt up to a distance of 4 kilometers. As many as 8 fire tenders were rushed to the spot to douse the flames which erupted after the blast. According to reports many people are feared trapped under the debris even as firefighters have begun rescue work on a war footing. Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis termed the incident unfortunate and asked the police and the local authorities to speed up the rescue operations. तीन से चार लोगों की मृत्यु हुई है ऐसी प्राथमिक जानकारी है और सौ के लगभग लोग इंजोर्ड है इलेवन थर्टी टू थर्टी फाइव के बीच में धमाका हो गया इमीजिएट हमको इंफॉर्मेशन मिली तो तीन चार गाड़िया इमीजिएट कॉल पे भेज दी द इंजोर्ड हैव बिन रश टू द नियर बाय हॉस्पिटल द एरिया हैज बिन क्वार ऑफ एंड मोबाइल सर्विस इन द एरिया हैव बिन सस्पेंडेड ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Let's get the international news now starting with the US where billionaire businessman Donald Trump has reached the number of delegates needed to clinch the Republican nomination to run for presidency. 69-year-old Trump is the only remaining GOP candidate left in the race and will go on to accept the nomination at the party's national convention in Cleveland. Its delegate count has him reaching the quota thanks to a small number of the party's unbound delegates who say that they would support him in July's convention. Trump has uh, the support of 1238 candidates one more than required The two day long G7 summit began in Japan today with leaders voicing concern about emerging economies Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe warned G7 counterparts about fears of an economic crisis on the scale of the Lehman Brothers while US President Barack Obama raised North Korea's ambitious nuclear issue here are more details as the G7 summit kicks off in Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe welcomed leaders of member countries at the Uji Bridge of the Ise Grand Shrine the holiest site of Shinto religion the leaders then gathered together and planted trees at the compound later the group began their first full working session with talks on trade During the trade session, G7 leaders voiced concern about emerging economies. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe made a pointed comparison to the 2008 global financial crisis. He also warned G7 counterparts about fears of an economic crisis on the scale of Lehman Brothers. え、世界経済について、ま、しっかりとした議論を行い、我々は大きな危機に、え、大きなリスクに Die Welt ein gewisses stabiles Wachstum, aber es gibt Schwächen, insbesondere bei den Schwellenländern. 
Und es gibt eine ganze Reihe von Risiken. Deshalb ist auch aus der japanischen Sicht, dem haben wir zugestimmt, ist sehr wichtig, eine gemeinsame ökonomische Initiative hier zu verabschieden. The group of seven are also likely to issue a counter-extremism action plan by the end of the two-day leader summit. North Korea also figured in the talks with US President Barack Obama saying the country's nuclear ambitions pose a serious medium term threat. North Korea is a is a big worry for all of us. Uh, they're not at the point right now where they can uh, effectively hit uh, US targets. But each time that they test, even if those tests fail, they learn something. Ahead of the U.S. President Barack Obama's visit to atomic bomb city of Hiroshima on Friday, dozens of protesters rallied in front of the city's iconic A-bomb dome. <laughs> While most of the residents in Hiroshima welcomed Obama's upcoming visit, hoping the conciliatory move will help them heal. U.S. President Barack Obama will be the first sitting U.S. leader to travel to the site of the world's first nuclear attack in 1945. He will be accompanied by Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on the visit. Bureau Report, Raju Sabah TV. Meanwhile, France is hit by serious disruptions at its biggest trade union has been on strike against the government's new labor reform laws. While protests have been continuing intermittently since March, the strikes, backed by the CGT, have intensified since last week leading to severe oil crisis in the country. CGT is against the labor reforms, which makes easier for firms to hire and fire workers. While the government insists that reforms are crucial to fight rampant unemployment, the union says that the reforms are too pro-business and will not be effective in reducing the country's unemployment situation. Meanwhile, the French government has said that it will not withdraw the labor reforms. Et créer de l'emploi, le dialogue social pour certains. Je suis respectueux de la CGT, dont je connais euh, euh, l'histoire, euh, sa participation pleine et entière à l'histoire de notre pays, oui. euh, à la résistance, à volonté mmh. de donner des droits aux, aux salariés. Mais ça n'est pas la CGT. And now let's give you some more international news updates in Global Buzz. Three new pieces of debris have been found in Mauritius and in Mozambique that could be linked to the missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370. Five other fragments have previously been found and identified as definitely or probably from the Boeing 777. All of them were discovered thousands of kilometers from this current search zone far off Australia's west coast. The country's transport minister said two of the new pieces were found in Mauritius with the other in Mozambique and were of interest in connection to the disappearance of the airline's flight. Gibraltar is shaken by the prospects of a Brexit when the United Kingdom goes to polls on the 23rd of June to decide whether it will remain in or leave the European Union. Although no official poll has been carried out, Britain's six square kilometre overseas territory, the 23,000 Gibraltians who have registered to vote are overwhelmingly expected to choose to remain in the EU. Having a hostile neighbour in Spain, Deputy Chief Minister Joseph Garcia said that makes the case in fact to remain in Europe necessary. Pakistan has stated that the U.S. drone strike that killed Taliban leader Mullah Akhtar Mansoor has determined the peace process, undermined, I'm sorry, the peace process with the militant group. For the first time, Pakistan also acknowledged that Mansoor is in fact dead five days after Washington said that it killed him. The assassination of Mansoor has strained Pakistan's already troubled relationship with the U.S. Islamabad wasn't informed in advance of the strike, which took place in a part of the country previously considered off-limits to U.S. drones. Over 100 firefighters were needed to tackle a fire at a Sydney car dismantling yard that sent plumes of smoke over the city. Fire crews were quick to respond, but the blaze spread quickly, fueled by the flammable materials inside the car yard. 
Two men were injured during the blaze. According to local media, the two men were taken to the Royal North Shore Hospital, where they remain in a critical condition. Police said that they were not treating the fire as suspicious, but were investigating the cause of it. And that's all we have for you on the news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.